Today's message I have heard in two different Baptist churches, Sunday school teacher, and they're wrong. And when somebody's wrong with the scriptures, I've got to come up with the King James Bible, and I've got to teach you what's right, because if I've heard it in two churches of all the churches I've been in, it's in others. And we cannot allow the word of God to be tampered with. Many people expect holy things from God when they're living an unholy life. They want God to fix their mess. And what we're going to look at today is a serious implication of a wrong tactic by the word of God. And I've got my Bible up on the screen, and I hope you'll follow along. It says in Revelation, if I may, thank you, Revelation 19, 13, he was clothed with a vesture. Now, what we're going to look at today, remember the word clothed, remember the word vesture, dipped in blood, remember that. And his name is called the Word of God. Now, that's Jesus Christ. The armies which followed in heaven, follow him upon white horses, clothed with uh, clothed with fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. He shall smite the nation. He treadeth the winepress. Remember the word winepress. Remember the word treadeth. Of the fierceness of the wrath. Remember wrath. Of the almighty God. Now that's perfectly fine. But there are people instructing Christians that this blood is the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to show you in Scripture that's wrong. Now, with all the highlight words I, I showed you, he's treading, wine press, fierceness. This is the second advent. This is the lion, the tribe of Jews. He's not the lamb again. He's the lion. He's angry. He's fierce. So if I take my thing, Revelation 19, I move this screen over, and I look at, all right, John Wesley. The blood of the enemies he has already conquered. Not his blood. All right? Treasure knowledge. John Traps, the dipped in blood in the blood of his enemies. As a victor returned from a huge slaughter. See, I'm, I'm using commentaries too. I'm seeing where he, where A.T. Robinson, I don't see, it says here, sprinkle with the blood as the case may be, not his own blood on Calvary. He gives you, he gives you verses here, okay? Pulpit. And I'm just reading. He's angry. He tramples in fury. Their blood shall be sprinkled on my garment. You know, Jesus. Matthew Poles. Blood of his enemies. The blood of his enemies, the People's New Testament commentary. Some of these. Jemison Fawcett Brown commentary. 
The blood is not his own. John Gill's blood of his enemies. Family Bible notes. Nothing. Commentary. Adam Clark. We're going to go to Isaiah 63 in a moment. But it's not his blood. Barnes. Emblem of slaughter. Not Jesus. Abbott. So you see, even the commentaries say that blood is not the blood of Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at the scriptures. And I told you, I've, I've been in two churches in here in Florida. And I, I rebuked one. Well, that's what people told me. You didn't study the Bible? Because you can't study the Bible out for a lesson. And then go say something, well, you know, this is Jesus' blood. What on earth would he be having his blood on his vegetable? Or the symbol of, you know, the Christians that are behind him. That's the white raiment that we get. And we get the white raiment and the righteousness of the same because of Jesus. Okay, so. i a good working pen here. I lost my pen again. I want to write things out. Yo, know, hey, can do me that good? All right, so we got that. We did that one. Look at Revelation 14. And we're, I'm going to be right here showing you the scripture. Revelation 14, 20. Hopefully I can get my ugly picture out of it later. Okay, Revelation 14, 20. This is the second advent. The wine press, remember that? Was trodden. Remember that? Without the city, blood. Remember that? The wine press. Even unto the horses' bridles. Remember that? Remember horses. By the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. That's about 200 miles. Are you telling me right now, we are looking at two verses. Are you telling me if that blood is Jesus' blood? Are you telling me that Jesus had 200 miles of blood? Come on. Scripture with scripture. You're not going to do that. Go sit down. And find somebody who will read and study and search the scriptures. Okay? Isaiah 63. So we would go there. Isaiah 63. I can say it's all here. I'm showing you. You're without excuse. Isaiah 63, verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Eden and dyed garments? Garments. Where's my thing? Hey, I don't want to open that up. Garment. From Basra. This is the glorious of his appear. Apparel. Excuse me. There's that word, apparel. Travel in the greatness of his strength. I speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red? And I apparel. The blood is on the apparel. Red. And thy garments like him that treadeth. That word, remember that? The wine fat. Remember that? Look how all the verses are running together here. I have trotted the white press alone. Listen, Jesus comes and we're behind him. We're not doing nothing. We're just a company. He's the fighter. 
he's the victor. And the people there was none with me. Jesus is alone. He said, well, we're the saints on horses. We're not people no more. We're likened to the angels. We're saints. For I will tread, there's that word again, in my anger, second advent, trample, remember that word, them in my fury, anger, and their blood, their blood, shall be sprinkled on my garments, Revelation 19, 13 through 15, and I will stain all my raiment. For this is the day of vengeance in my heart. So it's their blood, the people, that he comes back and is angry with. He stomps them with his horse, literally. And as he's stopping them, I mean, it's, the Bible's no fairy tale story. He is stomping his enemies with the horse, and as he's doing it, their blood is getting spread all over him. It's not his blood. I don't think Jesus had 200 miles of blood. Okay? Go to the Gospel of John, 19. And if you are a Bible reader, Bible study, some of these verses can be like, aha, uh -huh, yeah. I, 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 I was thinking that. When are you going to come to that verse? I, I was telling my daughter about this, and she's like, oh, and she came up with the verse. I, I, I already got it in my notes. <laughs> 1934. 1934. Keep losing my thing. But one of the soldiers with a spear, and they're trying to find this spear and this magical spear and all that, pierced his side. That's Jesus. Forthwith, from the wound, came out blood and water. You know what happened to the blood of Jesus? From the kangaroo court of the Sanhedrin to Pilate to the Roman soldiers and carrying his cross to Calvary and dying a brutal death on Calvary, being whipped, being tortured, being nailed, have the crown of thorns on his head, he's bleeding. And then when they when he's dying, they take his spear, they put it inside, he's dead. And when he, when he pulls that, that spear in his body, blood and water come out. That's the blood of Jesus. It's on the ground. Matter of fact, I, I'm ready to, I just thought of another Bible verse we can look at. Let me write this down. I don't know what exactly what the word is, but we can find it. We'll find it. If not, we're not. So all the blood of Jesus has spilled out on the ground by that so by that spear. In a Catholic church I read, you know, they have a little vial of the blood of Jesus. Oh shut up. You know, they got one head of John the Baptist as an adult and in another head of John the Baptist as a child. Why don't you just shut up and get out of the Catholic Church because they're a bunch of liars? And the Baptist in the Baptist Church is following right behind. When you get them teaching this nonsense, they don't study the Bible. They look at commentaries, they, they, they listen to other people, and they just parrot what they say. We don't need parrots. We need soldiers. Okay? Now, 1 John 5, 6. You're going to say, Styley. Look at all the scriptures. I know. And a lot of these people get up and they don't, you know, oh, we got a lot of scriptures. 
You can just write it down, check it out later. No, no. Why don't you slow down, wait for the pages to stop turning, and teach the word. By every word of God. You got it? Five, six. Son of God, Jesus, Son of God, five. This is he that came by water and blood. Well, there's the water and blood. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only. That's interesting. But by water and blood. And our, our body has water and blood. And this is the Spirit, Holy Spirit, that beareth witness because the Spirit is true. Okay. So in the body of Jesus... There was water and there was blood. And when they pierced his side, it came out on the ground. It's not on his vesture. He does not have in holy heaven today a pot or a vial of his blood. Nowhere do you see that. If it is his blood, it's wrong. It's wrong. Where does he get it from? He's got a whole, we're going to see, he's got a whole different arrangement. Okay? So, this is like Luke 24. I hope my mouse must die. Luke 24, 39. Oh, wait a minute, Luke 39. Boy, my writing is terrible. All right, this is the resurrected Jesus. He suffered. He's died. He's buried. Three days and three nights, he's resurrected. Behold my hands and feet. Remember that. Hands and feet. That it is I myself, Jesus. Handle me. You touch me. And see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. Okay, Jesus said, I'm not a ghost. I'm no ghost story. I am a living body, walking and talking and eating. And he says, flesh and bones. The resurrected body, he says nothing about blood and water. Now, blood and water was mentioned in John 19 and 1 John 5. But the resurrected Jesus... The resurrected Jesus, flesh and bone. And the, that flesh is still marred, remind you. He still bears the marks of our sins. Okay. All right, look at Genesis 2. Genesis 2. I'm going to make a statement here. You, and you're going to go, oh, you're flying off the handle. Genesis 2.20. Now watch this. Genesis 2.23. Watch the wording. Adam said, oh, that's the first man. This is now bone of my bones. And flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. Where is the blood? Adam says, I got bones and flesh. Jesus said, I got I got bones and flesh. Adam and the second Adam doesn't say anything about blood. There is no blood in Adam and Eve until after. They ate the fruit. Because your blood will carry diseases. Many of your diseases is in your blood. I've got a problem with diabetes. I've got a problem with COPD, emphysema. I, I, I've got a stage four kidney renal uh, failure. I've got a lot. Well, I already said my, my heart. I've got all kinds of medical things. And the number one thing that most of my doctors will do is they will give me a form to go down to the blood place and get my blood tested, and they get the report. And when, when they send me the report, you know, I get this one or two pages of everything they tested. 
and what the numbers are and what they should be, how high I am, how low I am. When there's a place for blood, the Holy Bible put it there, and Jesus said, after the resurrection, I have flesh and bone and no blood. That's exactly what Adam said before he fell. We're not going to have blood in our system when we get to heaven. There'll be no blood. You say, well, they didn't have any blood. What did they have? We'll talk about that another time. Right now, you've already been watched. Uh, uh, that didn't mean, didn't, uh, you know, well, that was stupid. Uh, Acts. Now, you got to be careful. If you're going to say that that is Jesus' blood, and it's not, Acts 20, 28. You better be careful. Because Acts 20, 28, take heed, therefore unto yourself, and to all the flock. Okay, if you're teaching Sunday school, you're teaching from a pulpit as a preacher, as a pastor, as an evangelist, whatever you're teaching. Okay? To the children of God. The Christians. Over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. So he's talking to pastors. He's talking to elders. To feed the church of God. All right, there's God. There's the church, pastors, which he has purchased with his own blood. That blood is God's blood. That blood is Jesus' blood. God is Jesus. Jesus is God. Tell the Jehovah Witnesses, go shut up. And don't you dare say that in Revelation 19, 13, that that blood is God's blood. That blood is Jesus' blood. It is not his blood. It's the enemies of God. It's the enemies of Jesus' blood. He's not going to take his holy, precious, sinless blood without spot and wipe it on a garment. That kind of Catholicism to me. I was a Catholic for 18 years. Okay, First Corinthians. I'm having fun. I feel good today. I don't usually feel good. Today I feel good. 11.25. Okay, watch Paul. 24. When he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it, eat. This is my body. Body. Which is broken for you this day in remembrance of me. Now Jesus was at the communion table. Jesus was alive. He had not been arrested yet. He had not been cuffed yet or tied or bound. He had not been into the kangaroo court. He had not been before Pilate. He had not been whipped. He's not been nailed to the cross. He is alive as man and as God. And he's got a body. At the same manner also he took the cup. The cup. When he had up saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it, remembrance of me. Now, are we drinking the literal blood of Jesus? When we take part in the Lord's Supper? No. But you're going to say that Revelation 19, 13, you're going to say, well, that's the blood of Jesus. But well, we don't drink the blood of Jesus. We drink what, what does the proper church drink? Grape juice. Wine. New wine. From the grape. When I had a home church in Norwich, Connecticut with my family, when we had the Lord's Supper, we actually went out and bought grapes and we had a juicer. And we had fresh juice for the Lord's Supper. And this is not the little blood of Jesus. And whosoever shall eat this bread, the body, drink the cup, the blood, unworthily, if you don't do it properly, how about if you teach unproperly, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord.
You better be careful with that blood because that blood's God's blood. That blood is you don't mess with it. You don't teach false doctrine about it. There are modern Bibles that remove the blood. Uh, chapter Okay, chapter 15. There you go. Chapter 15, verse 15. I got to tell you scriptures. Now this I say, 1 Corinthians 15, 15. Brethren, it's Christian. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corrupt inherit this incorruption. You don't have blood in it, and the kingdom of heaven is, you know, is that spiritual kingdom. It's different from the, from the kingdom of uh, um, heaven, uh, kingdom of God, and the, oh boy, I can't remember what the other kingdom is. But there's two kingdoms. Kingdom of heaven, to get into God's heaven, 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 there is no blood. The flesh and blood. But you will have flesh and bone. Because you will get a brand new body. It will not be like our bodies. And you won't have the blood veins. You won't have a heart. I don't think. I know you won't have blood like Adam, like Eve. Hebrews. Hebrews. Somebody said, I knew you were going to go to Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9, 12. And it, you know, I know he's going to do that verse. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, God's blood, he entered in once unto the holy place, the, the temple, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, God's blood, who through the eternal spirit, Holy Spirit, offered himself without spot to God? When you're trying to say that that blood is Jesus' blood, you are messing with a holy, righteous topic that is removed from modern Bibles. You are messing with the very blood of God, the very blood of Jesus, and the very blood that cleanses our sins. It's not to be taken literal. Friend, listen to me. If I went to a restaurant and, I, and she comes up to me, what would you like? If I had a, I said, I want a cup of coffee. And I want cream and sugar on the side. And she brings me a cup, coffee cup, and I take a sip from it. And it's tea. I know it's not coffee. Something's wrong. And I gotta say, miss, excuse me, uh, this is tea. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I got you mixed up with another table. That's perfectly okay. And I, I, let me have the coffee. Let me have what's right. And that's what I'm doing with this lesson. I'm trying to give you what's right. You got tea. You wanted coffee. Here's the coffee. Um, Hebrews 10, 19. I'm trying to read it. Did I read it? Okay. 10, 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter in the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So, are we carrying blood when we go to heaven? We're seated right now in heavenly places. Are we carrying blood of Jesus? No. He tries to say, we go into heaven, we carry the blood of Jesus. And he's going, what's he going to do? Take that blood and put it on his garments when he comes back? Second Advent, that's foolish. That's almost like saying Noah built the ark out of cement. Uh, 
And if you're getting up there to say, I'm telling you right now in this video, uh, um, October 4th, 2023, I'm telling you, you're wrong. And you got to search the scriptures. And you tell whoever whoever's teaching, you tell them and give them this video. I hope they listen. So Revelation, they get mad. Oh, well. People who don't like the truth get mad. Revelation 1, 13. There it is. And then Mr. Seven Kings, one like unto the Son of Man. That's Jesus. Clothe, raiment down to the foot, and girt about paps with a golden girdle. Where's the blood? Now, I'm going to read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were a flame of fire, and feet like the fine black brass, as if burned in the furnace. His voice is the sound of many waters. In his right hand had seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. You saw that in Revelation 19. His countenance was like the sun, the shines in the strength. Where is the blood? There is no blood. There is his garment. Okay. Back to Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 12. But this man, after he had entered once, after he offered one sacrifice for sin, forever sat down on the right hand of God. If he's going to bring that blood back when he comes back in the second advent, you got Catholic, didn't you? You became a Baptist Catholic. You know, when they partake of their Lord's Supper, they believe that that blood is the literal blood of Jesus. Friend, that's what you're talking about when you say that that garment is stained with, with Jesus' blood. When he comes back, he's sprinkled with God's blood. Sprinkled? Sprinkled? You better get your Bible right. Don't you get mad at me. Malachi. Oh, he's going to an old book. Now this, what we're going to read, is all over the Old Testament. But Malachi 4, verse 3. And, he, he, and ye shall tread down the wicked. Tread. See that word tread? Second heaven. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. You're going to walk over to dead people. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Now there are many places in the Bible. It's talking about trampling with horse. Jezebel was trampled by a horse and her blood stained the wall. Or the tower or something. Okay. Proverbs. Now let me show you the wicked side. Proverbs. One. Sixteen. Now here's the wicked. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Murder. 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 Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah 59. Their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Murder. You know, there are places, companies, industries 
that in the long run, their products actually kill. Some of them know it. God's going to get you for murder. I don't care how you loop hell yourself, how you put your signs up, how you, you know, you get your lawyers and that's murder is murder. Killing is killing. The shedding of blood. God values blood in the Bible. And the blood was offered in the Old Testament at the temple. Because in the blood is the life of man. Well, we got eternal life by Jesus. We won't need the blood in New Jerusalem. Our life is by God. We're going to be like Adam. No, no blood. Romans 5. I know you don't believe that, but that's okay. You can be wrong. Maybe one day I'll do a message about that. 15. 3.15. Sorry. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Look at that. That's, that's out through the Bible. The Bible acknowledges that there are wicked people out there. And more than what the newspapers say, more than what the TV news say, more than what goes at the coffee table at work, more than that you get through this person, through that person. There are people today who were killed, who were murdered, who died because of someone else. You know what's so funny? I don't have a TV. I don't have cable TV. I don't need it. But there's been times I've been in a hospital and they got the TV. So I'll, I watch, you know, programs that I'll watch. And you get these commercials for medication. And it's funny because some of them will say the side effects is death. But see, we give you that legal notice. You can't get us. I wonder how God feels about that. Yeah, I should do a study on murder. Genesis 49. Genesis 49. Verse 10. Verse 9. Judah is a lion's wealth. There's a lion tribe of Judah. Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. For a lawgiver between his feet. Unto Shiloh come and unto him shall be the gathering of the people be Israel. Binding his foal unto the vine. Grapes. His ass coat unto the choice vine. Grapes. He washed his garments. He washed his garments in wine. Grapes. And his clothes in the blood of grapes. That's not his blood. The blood of Jesus Christ is likened to the Lamb of God. The Passover Lamb. Now when he gave the Lord's Supper, he gave us grape juice. As symbolic to his blood. Was he going to pour grape juice all over him? Answer my question. Revelation. Revelation 7. And did you see? I said to him, Sir, thou knowest, 714. He said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, have washed their robes, and made them white of the blood of the Lamb.
So we're going to have walk around with, with red robes, like the Catholics. What do I have here? He that overcome it shall be clothed with white raiment. Revelation 3 5. 3 18, I counsel you to get a white raiment. Chapter 4, verse 4, white raiment, not blood. 6 11, white robes were given. 7 9, they were clothed with white robe. No red. 7.13, arrayed in white robes. You read 7.14. 15.6, clothed with pure and white linen. 19.8, uh, fine linen, clean and white. For fine linen is a righteous thing. But, and, and, there's no great juice. There's no blood. 1914, clothed with fine linen, white and clean. That's wrong. Revelation 19. Thirteen. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. That's the blood of his enemies as he's tromping them. To death. That is not his blood. And you remember the first John, the word of God and the blood and the water? That's Jesus Christ. Uh, the verse I want to see, I can. Look at seventeen thirteen, Leviticus, and. Who was there men, there be of the children of Israel, or strangers a sojourn among you, but hunteth and catches any beast or fowl that may be eaten? All right. Don't we symbolize the bread and the grape juice? He shall even pour out the blood thereof, he pierced the side, and cover it in, in, with dust. The blood of Jesus went in the dirt. The ground is cursed, Genesis 3. You ever see Sherman paint company symbol? They got the, the globe and a paint can is still in paint on the globe and the paint's coming down. Do you know what color that paint is? 
It's red. All the colors they could have had. And they picked red to cover the earth. Well, I'm here to tell you that blood in Revelation 19.13 write down the enemies of God. The enemies of Jesus Christ. And when you hear somebody say it is Jesus' blood, give them this video. Give them the references. Have a good day.